What is up, sports fans, and welcome back to another episode of Pez's Picks. I am Jeff Hartman, the host without the picks. Pez is here with the picks. If you're watching on YouTube, do us a favor, like the video, follow, and subscribe to our Fans for Sports Network YouTube channel so you don't miss anything. And if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, follow so that you get all of these episodes every single week. we got a lot of stuff coming up with the NFL and football getting started up soon. That's going to be exciting. But with all that out of the way, Pez, what's up, man? Welcome back. Jeff, I mean, uh, for a golf fan or for a gambler, the, the greatest sport event of the year. You can close a bar watching live British Open, and when you wake up, it's still the same round, Jeff, in the morning. <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't know what they do over there in England, but, but for some reason, it's always daytime. So great week. We got a little break yeah. from baseball, so we get a little focus in a little bit more on it. And, you know, like we talk about a lot, Jeff, golf gambling – it's like a 50 50 raffle with a little bit of data. You can make an argument. I mean, unless you take a favorite, of course, a chef or a McElroy, but, but I think in a field of 150, 200 guys, you got to go with the long shots a little bit more to get to, to kind of have the cost benefit analysis that we're looking for. So exciting week, Jeff, we got a lot of plays we'll be yeah. talking about. Well, let's not jump the gun. Let's talk about major league baseball. Uh, you last time we recorded last Thursday, boy, we were in, we were in the bottom of the barrel. Like we were scrapping, we were scratching and clawing just to keep our head above water. And then what happens? You rattled off several winners leading up to the all-star break. You're up to 59% in MLB picks, which is still way above the watermark of 50% above the Mendoza line. If we're using a baseball term, Pez, what's your take on major league baseball picks? And then also coming up out of the all-star break. Well, you know, Jeff, we talk about it a lot. If you're going to be a, a baseball handicap you're going to wager consistently it, you can't really look at it by weeks it, you got to look at it more in the long term uh there's people that go to the track and operate like this too where it's a it's a plus minus dollar more than it is a, a win loss and i've talked about it with some of my colleagues uh we probably should have re recorded our our wins and losses based on money and money line uh, i i think you know being that we're just winners here jeff has his picks just giving out winners we keep it simple but We've taken a lot of underdogs that have covered, which means you're getting plus money on that return. So I, I think we're doing a little bit better than 59%, but in just picking winners, uh, we're happy with about 60. Um, you know, we tweak things a little bit, you know, coming into the all-star game, those two weeks are always tough. I think the best play we had all year, Jeff, there were a couple games I was looking at on Sunday and I reminded myself, you do not bet the game before the all-star game. Uh, it, it's a minefield, Jeff. There's guys that are lining up, you know, tea times. They're lining up family vacations. They're lining up all-star games. I just saw our guy Paul Skeens, Jeff. I'm getting worried about him. He he walked Why? in with he walked in with Livy Dunn to the all-star game. It looked like the Oscars. This guy's in a tuxedo. What, what, what wardrobe changes, Jeff? But anyway, there, there's guys lining up. Strip Wouldn't up. you want to be seen with her though? Of course, of course. <laughs> but this guy, can, can, can he keep going, Jeff? I don't know. That guy was awesome. He's throwing 100 mile heaters, 100 mile an hour heaters in the first inning. Uh, but it, it's going to be an exciting, exciting end to the season. Yeah. Post All Star break is when you earn your money in baseball. You could hit 225 up to the All Star break. You finish the year hitting 325. You're cashing in. So I think mentally it, it becomes an easier investment, and uh, it, in terms of mentally, the players, the way they look at the games, and coaches you know there's a race to the playoffs and i think pittsburgh jeff we're going to be looking at the numbers next couple of days pretty solid play right now for a world series championship this year jeff wow. if they get in the playoffs think about it jeff we've got two unbelievable stud solid starting pitchers on that team and that, that's really all you need to win in the playoffs right I they've mean, got Skeen, three though they've got three, three. they've got Skeens, jones and keller so they actually have three good pitchers i think that's a great great situation and you're probably getting a really great return right now so we're going to be looking at some of those and i, I think those numbers could change after the all-star game they might go yeah. down but i like pittsburgh scrappy um you know and I, I i think some things are going to correct themselves a little bit as we keep going braves are a team to watch out for jeff that's a sneaky scrappy team as usual absolutely and the all-star game was uh, I'm recording this on wednesday it was last night paul Skeens pitched that first inning it was it was electrifying stuff just based on the fact that it's, we've talked about Skeen so much here, I'm not just talking as a Pirates fan, but uh, you know, you got to see him go against Juan Soto and he, awesome. Aaron Aaron Judge. He he pumped a hundred mile an hour fastball inside. He 
grounds out to third on one pitch and he's out of the inning and Livy Dunn's up there in the crowd going nuts. So it was a good event for Paul Skeen. Jeff, that's for sure. has Livy Dunn become the new Taylor Swift of Major League Baseball? My I wife identified has. that. Uh, and as usual, I went on a tangent, Jeff, but to finish my thought, we laid <laughs> off we laid off on that Sunday before the All-Star game. Nine of 16 games had underdogs win, Jeff. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Um, and some of them two plus to one. So I think the Phillies were minus 225. They got blown out. So we got to watch out for mind, minds in the minefield of baseball gambling, Jeff. And, of course, we watch out for Livy Dunn. I mean, I, I, I'm a fan, Jeff. I'm a fan of what the baseball is doing. They're copying Taylor. Kelsey, next thing you know, you're going to have a, a podcast with, with us and maybe Skeens. I don't know what we're <laughs> waiting for, Jeff. He, he's your guy. That's your hometown. I mean, what are we doing here? Uh, he's not a very talkative guy. He may, get, be, he may be better off with Livy Dunn on the podcast. <laughs> well, take her but, too, Jeff, of course. Yeah, there that's, you go. That's really what I'm looking for, but my wife's listening. So. I get it. I get it. All right, so let's leave baseball because there's really no upcoming games that we want to touch on, and we'll get it back into the uh, algorithm. Let's talk about another tournament that we cashed in on, the Euro Championship, England and Spain. You actually got a prop bet right here, Pez, and plus 950 odds for the final score. You got it right. Why don't you explain it? 2-1 Spain, big winner for us, Chef. I mean, we put out 2-1, 3-1. Uh, I, I, you know, that game kind of, you know, we, we looked like we knew what we were talking about. It was 1-1 for a time. And I, I think England you know, played as, as good as they could have played, Jeff. I mean, the coach has already, uh, his name's Carol Southgate, former uh, English national player. He he stepped down or fired, whatever it may be. But I, I think England actually played better than what he's getting criticized for in Spain watching my brother was up from florida he's an old soccer guy he could have believed the speed that that spain played with i mean these guys were knocking the soccer ball around like like the detroit red wings with better off used to knock the puck around jeff so a, a pretty game to watch i mean that's what we call soccer the beautiful game uh, but you know I, the more i talked about it, the more i got attacked around here jeff i'm a south jersey philly guy every time i made a soccer video i was attacked relentlessly by by people i grew up with for they hate the sport, Jeff. I, I can't get them to like it. I love the Premier League. I enjoyed the Euro. Uh, even my brother got on me. He said, how come you're not watching Copa America? I said, who watches that, John? I mean, what, what, that, that's a Florida thing, I guess. But Argentina wins that, which is, which is I guess is uneventful for Spain. Uh, tough tournament to bet, Jeff. And soccer's tough. We're always going to say that. You can't take large favorites in soccer. It's a crazy sport. No way would I ever advise people to take a minus 700 or 800 game. We, we look for advantages when you're getting money, Jeff. And, you know, Turkey was a good team on that in this tournament. So that's going to be more of the same with the Premier League. When you can win, lose, or draw, and you're, you're betting one out of those three, you got a 66.66% .66 chance of losing. We're never going to advise people to, to go in and invest in two to one or three to one or, or greater, Jeff. So that's kind of our soccer philosophy here at Pez's Picks. All right, so let's move on from the Euro Championships, and let's. I've been really excited to talk with you about this, and we're talking about golf. The final major of the calendar year is upon us. Uh, I, I, when the hell did they change it from the British Open to the Open? I just said this on my golf podcast, the Fairways and Dreams podcast. Check it out if you want to listen to some golf content, Fairways and Symbol Dreams. I said, w did I miss that? Like, I feel like five years ago I just woke up, and it wasn't the British Open anymore. It was just the Open Championship. <laughs> when did that happen? Uh, Jeff, I, I don't know. Uh, I like the British Open. I think that's got a nice character to it. The Open, that could be a lot of different things, right? I mean, there, there's True. bowling opens, there's pool opens. So I don't know, Jeff, maybe uh, maybe the Brits got finally got to see that social network movie, the Mark Zuckerberg story, where, where uh, I didn't know this, Jeff, but Justin Timberlake told Facebook to drop the the and make it just Facebook. Maybe Justin Timberlake pitched in here, Jeff, and he, he told him <laughs> drop the British. I don't know why. I love England. Nice, classy people over there. The bars close at midnight. That's a lonely negative. And but aside from that, why why wouldn't you want to call it British Open? I, I, that too perturbs me, Jeff. Yeah. So, anyways, the, the the Open Championship is at Royal Troon. Tiger Woods is in the field. I do know that from catching your Pez's Picks videos, which you can catch those on Twitter X at Pez's Picks as well as on Instagram. We actually are mirroring each other quite a bit with these picks. Now I wow. dove way, I dove way into the specials here, Pez. So like yeah. I'm gonna be talking about some other stuff. And by the way, you know, golf is tough to to bet. Last week at the Scottish Open, I hit three specials. 
I picked wow. one. I picked a top five finish and Rory McIlroy top 10 finish and Ludwig Oberg and a top 20 finish with Aaron Rye. So I'm kind of on a heater here. So we'll see if I can keep that going. But what do you think about the, the Scottish, oh, I'm sorry, it's not Scottish, the British open. That's what I'm going to call it. And Scotty Scheffler is still the odds on favorite. I've seen plus 450. I've seen plus 500. And then Rory McIlroy at plus 800. What do you think? Well, Jeff, first of all, we got to congratulate you. You you won money on the greatest two-glove golfer possibly in the history of the game, Jeff. <laughs> I could watch Rye all day with those two gloves. I would try it, Jeff, but I, I, that's scary. I, I'd get made fun of more for just my swing. I love that play. Uh, Jeff, this week, um, it, it's, as you know, anyone that, you know, watches golf or gambles on golf, the British Open is insanity. You, you could have half the field wiped out by a two-hour deluge and 50-mile-an-hour yeah. wind, and then the, the second half of the day could be sunny and, and, and 70 degrees. So there's a lot of fortune or misfortune that goes into this. Um, I, I, I think, you know, Scheffler, obviously, everything about him and his game plays well to this course. I, I just question, can a guy like that, can any guy keep winning with that pace? So to me, plus 450. Not a good cost benefit analysis kind of odds when you're up against 150 guys, and he hasn't played in a while, Jeff. So I, I don't, I don't know if that's going to equate to success. Rory McIlroy, love the guy, Jeff, but it's, it's turned into a soap opera. Rory McIlroy, I mean, with the with the Balionis and the wife and the poor kid. I, I don't know, Jeff. I don't know if being at home helps him. Um, I was talking about it with you know the the fifth string punter from JMU from 21 years ago. Uh, we we think an old guy's going to win this week. You're gonna have you're gonna have tough conditions, bogeys. It's a super frustrating course. Um, I, I think it's gonna be a journeyman. I think we're gonna kind of get get order back in golf. We've had thousand to one guys or Scotty Scheffler win everything, but Shambo, of course, you know, with the open win. So I, I'm selling Shambo too, Jeff. I got the pregame on or the at the range with the open. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau's turned into who, who is this guy? He's laughing it up every day. He's doing jokes with the guys on the course while he's trying to practice. What 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 is going on in the golf world, Jeff? I, Bryson DeChambeau is the most likable golfer. All of a sudden, what what what's happened here? What what's going on in the golf world? <laughs> well, yeah, because he changed his image. He started putting out content that was fun. He started to do a YouTube channel and giving tutorials, and he had other influencers on his podcast and on his channel to talk about golf. And and he hey. Whoever gave him the idea, maybe it was himself. I don't know. Genius. Absolutely genius. Cause he was, I'm going to, I'm going to use this term and I use it often. Actually, he was a giant douche with the, with the little hat on for all those years when he was sponsored by Cobra, he goes to live. Okay. Now he's even more of a douche. Now he totally changes everything about his, his game and he's beloved. What a 180 man. What a 180. Jeff, you know, at Pez's Picks, we pride ourselves at keeping it real, okay? We hate Bryson DeChambeau. I was a fan in the beginning. I like this game. I like this whole, you know, one club length approach. Yeah. Douche is the greatest call of, of, of Pez's Picks, Jeff. That's, <laughs> that is no other word. I, I don't know. I think golf is struggling, and, and I think it's kind of, you know, treaded water, Jeff, where we've got, yeah. you know, Keegan Bradley, the Ryder Cup guy. I think people are looking to try to figure out a solution to kind of the cloud we're in. Uh, you know, which brings us to Colin Montgomery and Tiger Woods, Jeff. People oh, don't know. Colin Montgomery is this old, puffy British guy from the Ryder Cup. I don't wear Can't a baseball hat. He attacks Tiger Woods, Jeff, who, for no reason. Tiger Woods trying to save the golf world. He, he's, he surrendered the Ryder Cup captaincy to try to get PGA and then live to come together. You know, T Tiger's not a great family guy, Jeff, but he's a great golfer, and all men should like him. Colin Montgomery suggests he should retire. Colin Montgomery's – what – I'm just saying, Jeff, what an asshole. Who is this guy? Old British Scottish lump to tell Tiger you have no right to be out there? He, Colin wouldn't be playing on the senior tour without Tiger Woods. Those guys used to make five grand on their tournaments. They're making a quarter mil now. I, I think Tiger Woods is going to be on a mission, Jeff. I, I, plus 230. Yeah. We got him in at the beginning of the week to make the cut. Love I think it. that's – I love it too. I mean, of course, could be a weather nightmare, and you know that could happen to anybody, but – but I think those odds have dropped. Uh, Kyle Montgomery's already backtracking a little, Jeff. He knows once Tiger, once Tiger wants you dead, I, I think I, he might kill people, Jeff. I don't know. I'm, a, I'm terrified of Tiger Woods. The guy's got a twinkle in his eye. I hate to say this too, Jeff, but I was watching Phil Mickelson on the range. 
The guy is, is felt again. He's dropped a ton of weight, yep. which he did a couple years ago, pulled off a miracle. And like Tiger, Jeff, Phil's an assassin. He's been getting crapped on for a long time. I think Phil Mickelson could do something this week as well. He's got the game. He's got every shot. If he's on a, a little bit, I, I think, you know, making the cutter a top 20, maybe better isn't out of the picture for Phil. Tiger's clap back moment with Colin Montgomery, who I cannot stand, by the way, from the Ryder Cup. And and honestly, he was a he was a Ugh. prick even when he wasn't in Ryder Cup play. I've gone to events, and if you're around Montgomery, he was the one who was always telling the crowd to stop moving if they moved an inch or breathe. The, uh, uh, Give me a break. Much. Yeah, seriously. Anyways, Tiger saying, "Well, you know, I've won this tournament and this championship multiple times, so I have the I'm exempt until I'm 60." Colin doesn't have that exemption, so I guess he has to worry about it himself. I mean, it was a choker. The perfect, it was the perfect, the perfect comeback from Tiger Woods. And I'm with you, though. I like Tiger Woods to make the cut at plus 230. Uh, those are really good odds. When you look at to make the cut odds, that was always in the minuses. Tiger plus 230 to make the cut. I think that he's going to bookend cuts made with the Masters because he did make the cut there. I think he's going to make the cut at the Open Championship this weekend, Royal Troon. But we actually also both agree on a long shot here. Who's your pick as a long shot to, to win some money and could potentially win the British Open? Well, it, it, we've got a couple, Jeff, and we have one we're just going to put out. You know, we put out five plays for this British Open, but no baseball betting. we got to get action in somewhere, Jeff. I'll be back in Atlantic City uh, tomorrow. We're at the ocean, so we're going to have a lot of wagering going on. Uh, a a last-minute underdog, our biggest underdog, Jeff, Gary Woodland to win the tournament is plus seventy five thousand dollars, Jeff. So wow, is it is it likely? Of course not. But Pez's picks, you know, prior to us getting together last year, Jeff, our greatest call of the year, we hit Brian Harmon. I think he was one hundred and twenty one, twelve thousand to one, so or plus twelve thousand. So uh, my compadres and I looked this week. Why not Gary Woodland? The guy won in I think it was twenty nineteen, the U.S. Open at Pebble, yep. which yep. which plays like a you know a British Open, same conditions, weather, course. Uh, guy, the guy for ten years up to that U.S. Open didn't have a top five finish in a major, and he won. He's been even worse, and the poor guy had brain surgery, had to remove a tumor this fall. I think golf needs this story, Jeff. We need a happy comeback, you know, uh, comeback story, maybe ever in sports. If this guy were to win, and hey, one dollar. Which is seven hundred and fifty dollars? It's not bad, Jeff. It's not bad at all for a former major winner. I mean, he's not too old either. No, that's a Kevin of the Office pick there. I mean, yes, it is. Uh, who else you got outside of Woodland at those crazy odds? So uh, we early in the week we went with Oberg, Aberg. If you're American, Jeff, I don't know. They keep correcting me on that one, but uh, Aberg, I think we got it was. Let me check, Jeff. He was plus sixteen hundred. That's what I have here. Plus sixteen hundred okay. for Ludwig. So, so we took him for the win. Um, I mean, he's this guy's obviously going to win a lot of majors. Jeff. He's awesome, right? This guy's like a golf machine, and we've talked about has this crazy Scandinavian happiness. So I, you got to be happy in the British Open. You're going to have bad breaks. You're going to have balls that, you know, get trapped and, you know, get snookered, as they say in golf, uh, pool over there. I think Aberg's mentally perfect for this type of tournament. His swing, everything about his game is – sets up perfectly he's going to be hitting bombs he'll be chipping you know sandwiches in on most holes so love him with those odds i think he's the fourth player in the world right now so it's bound to happen sooner or later dude can't finish those i don't have him on my list this week he's not a good finisher on the golf course and at plus whatever it is 1400 1600 whatever the odds are now i'm going in different directions let me give you a couple of my picks and then we'll go with one that we both agree on my favorites at if you're trying to just win a bet, like you're just trying to win some money, how do you not take Scotty Scheffler, even at plus 450? It's not the best cost analysis, like you say, but it's still it's a safe bet. Bryson DeChambeau's odds, as of from Tuesday to Thursday, they've gone uh, they've gone from plus 1,600 to plus 1,800. Bryson DeChambeau, I know he's not playing every week on the PGA Tour. The dude finished top 10, I think a T6 in the Masters, second in the PGA Championship, won the U.S. Open. Someone tell me why this guy isn't a good pick at plus 1,800. Like, I think it's, hey, it's, you, those are great odds, and the guy, should, as this, at least this year, has been a gamer. He's going to show up. He's going to play well. Now, one of my long shot picks, though, you like Mr. Tony Finau at 5,000. Am I right? Absolutely, Jeff. 
Uh, I think. Go ahead. Go ahead. He's he's basically a cloner of of Oberg. I mean, they're tall, slender, wiry guys. They're going to hold up well in the wind. You know, that's something I learned from from watching golf over the years, Jeff. Once it gets super windy, you need you need to have kind of a powerful frame. You need haunches like Rom's got, or you know, the guys get blown around with their putt, and that can throw people off. Phil Mickelson, you know, big dudes tend to do well. I, Shambo, I, I, the reason I like Fino, he's really improved around the greens and with his putter. I, I don't know if Shambo's game is that, Jeff. And, you know, he's great with a wedge, but I don't know if he's got the mechanics to to make these tricky, handsy shots around the greens. I mean, he he's mastered one swing. He never breaks it, same length clubs. And I, I think you need a little bit more creativity around the greens to win a British Open. That's the only thing I don't like about him. Of course, he's, you know, second best player in the world right now. I'm sure. So we're, we're, we're yeah. taking down a giant here a little bit. But I love Finau. Finau comes in, Jeff. Three, he's come in five straight top twenty fives and three straight top tens. That's, that's as hot as Scheffler in a, in a lot of ways, except closing, which of course you know, I mean Scheffler's right now the greatest living closer in all sports probably. So <laughs> if Finau can get that done, I, I I love his attitude too. The guy's a family guy. He's got a huge huge tribe of kids and he, he looks at golf, not, you know, in a, he, he's not, you know, beating himself up too much after a round. He, he's got bigger things to, to think about. And I think that's a good way to look at the, the British open. You got to have a good sense of where you're at in life. It can't be a, you know, a do or die kind of situation like it is for a lot of these guys. Hey, let's, let's, this is a, some interesting data that I want to sh- throw your way. And it, I had Fino as a long shot of plus 5,000 as well. Listen to this. So since 2010, minimum rounds of 24 rounds of golf. So like Scotty Scheffler is not going to be in this because we're just talking about the open championship. So you're not going to get Scotty Scheffler in this mix because he doesn't have 24 rounds in. And this goes all the way back to 2010. The top 10 best open championship players are as follows. I'll just do the top three. Jordan Spieth is actually the number one. Rory McIlroy, not a shock, is number two. Tony Finau is number three as the best open championship players. When it comes to strokes gained, he's at plus 1.91. That's astounding. So I saw that I was like, Tony Finau, like you said, this is, it fits his game and he plays well there. So I like that pick a lot. Are there any other plays you like from the Scott, the open championship? Well, you know, I, I love this guy, Jeff. I think he's one of the best golfers I've ever watched in my life. Adam Scott. Big week last week. His numbers yeah. are a lot better than they have been. He's been working with a couple of old pros on just getting the swing back to what it was in the beginning. It appears they've done that. Top 10, Adam Scott's plus 410. I think that's great numbers. Want to be a little more conservative. Top 20, plus 175. Uh, you know, everything matches up for him again. Putting's his weakness. And these greens, I've been reading, Jeff, they're getting slower and slower. They think they're going to be rolling about nine on the stint meter, which if you're not a golfer, that that's – that's where you're to get on an easy like municipal course in America. I yeah. mean, they're that Excellent. that bodes bodes well for guys that you know her, their touch around the greens aren't as great putting. I think it bodes well for Tiger too. He, that guy, the putter let him down in, in the last tournament. I mean, he he hit the ball great and drove it great, but his speed was off. Slow greens, easy to get that speed down. You're kind of banging it the same everywhere you're at. It's not going to roll off the green. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Let me ask you what you would take with this bet. So this was uh, from FanDuel Sportsbook. It's the big guns versus the field. The big guns are Scotty Scheffler, Rory McIlroy, Xander Shoffley, and Ludwig Oberg. If one of those guys wins, it's plus 164. And the field, I believe, is minus 115. What are you taking, the big guns or the field? I mean, it's... It, it, if you really wanted to punch the numbers on this is this kind of thinking that Pez's picks, we go into and make an official play, Jeff. So to really <laughs> give you a, 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 a good analysis, I'd have to check, you know, what times they're teeing off. That's true. If, That's true. if two of them were early, two were later, you know, I might like that a little better. Haven't said that, even if that was the case, I think we're taking the field, Jeff, uh, you know, we're numbers people. So four out of what is it? Probably 180 guys. I don't even know. 200. They, they, they're starting at 1 a.m. This tournament's going to be on for like 15 hours tomorrow. Yeah, so it's awesome. I, I, I just think, you know, of course they're the four best guys right now, but but that that's a big field, and you know I, I'm going to go field. Okay. Just All because right. of the number return, you know, you're yeah, not getting absolutely. a big return. 
It should be a good weekend of golf. But before we call this a show, I want to talk about something you've been doing on those social media platforms at Pez's Picks. That's on Twitter and X, as well as on Instagram. Uh, you've been talking about NFL future plays, and we teased this last week, so we're going to be talking about it. Uh, this is a, a crapshoot for all thirty-four and, and all thirty-two NFL teams. And you have some teams where we talked about this before we hit record. If if Brandon Ayuk of the San Francisco 49ers gets traded and he re- officially requested a trade, doesn't mean he will get traded. They have an over under at 11 and a half wins. That changes everything. So Pez, you've been going division by division, taking your, sometimes it's a no play. Sometimes you're taking it over or the under. What's your approach to these future bets like the NFL uh, totals? Well, you know, Jeff, like we were just talking, it, it's a, it's a lot of data work and it's a lot of analysis on, on strength of schedule and who they're playing in the next year. And so we, we try to go through each game, Jeff, and, and try to come up with, we count the number of wins in each game. You know, then we look at division opponents where you're, you know, a really good teams going to go four and two or five and one in the division. I mean, six and that would be amazing. So injuries, trades, big moves. I mean, these things haven't happened too much this, you know, since we've been doing the plays last month or so, but I look leaving San Fran. I think that that's an automatic under for the San Francisco 49ers. They're at 11 and a half. Uh, that, that guy, I don't think the offense moves without that guy. Uh, he, he's just a possession guy, tough dude over the middle. Fat, I mean, he's got everything. So I, I think that exposes the quarterback even more than I thought he was exposed last year. So that that would be an under if this actually happens. So this is why it's tough, Jeff. We're we're going to be hitting the NFC West in the next com- coming days, and you know we're going to put that into our our thought process. And maybe he stays. So these are things you have to look at when you're making these wagers. And and if you're doing it through an, an online casino or, or betting book, then you you can cancel these bets sometimes too. So. It's kind of you know you gotta you gotta watch what you're doing with these. Um, having said that, one of the main roles in in taking the team over under quarterback controversy, Jeff, or lack thereof, a quarterback. Any quarterback controversy team, and I hate to say it because I I see the yellow you know towel behind you. I think that is a automatic nightmare going into any season, Jeff. This, I think the Steelers. I I have no idea what they're doing. I think the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> same thing, Jeff. You can't have two great. Two, two starting quarterbacks. I mean, that, that that just doesn't jive in the NFL. So those are things we look at that severely hurt a team's chances of hitting the over or taking the team. Um, when we're to look at the Steelers, I never bet against them, Jeff. The Steelers have this weird way of, of winning all season and, and, you know, doing things they shouldn't do. So we'll, we'll be looking at that closely. We did take the under Atlanta Falcons. Uh, Mike Penix Jr., I, Kirk Cousins. He threw a tantrum, Jeff, when they drafted him. What kind of man is Kirk Cousins to publicly throw a tantrum because they brought in another guy? This is how fragile these quarterbacks are. So uh, we, we, a lot of things go into it. They're fun plays. They're great for the end of the season. I mean, well, unless you lose, Jeff. But we're going to hit all winners on these plays. Absolutely. Now, for those of you that are just joining the Pez's Picks group, whether it's on social media, hopefully you're listening to the podcast as well, Football is where we really make our money here at Pez's Picks. So you might have said, oh, look at this cold spell in uh, baseball or basketball. The March Madness started off so poorly. Football is a different beast. Okay, so stick with us. We're just getting started with this stuff. And Pez, training camps have started, man. I'm sure you're excited. Can't wait, Jeff. You know, and that's you know kind of a scary time. I mean, you need training camp. It's a contact sport, but. You hate when stars go down, and, and yep. you know you got to stay on these things if you're a fantasy player. But if you're if you're wagering money, these are things you got to really keep an eye. You know the most underrated thing are when starting offensive linemen go down because people don't know their names usually, and you know losing one guy on an O line could could upset the entire offense. So these are things that we're going to be looking at daily and, and punching the numbers. We got nothing else going on, Jeff. It's it's summertime and. We're, we're, we'll be we'll be rolling the dice in Atlantic City come come about this time tomorrow, Jeff. I, I'm, That's awesome. I let the wife hold the ATM cards when I walk into those places and take a couple bucks, Jeff, because you know the action. You, you feel it in AC more than Vegas, Jeff. Vegas not a big gambling town. AC though, I don't know. There ain't nothing else to do there now, Jeff. It's kind of a war zone on the streets. I feel bad for the people. It's a bad neighborhood, but in there in there you feel the action. I love it. I love it. Well, Pez, that sounds great. I'm sure we'll hear about your. Uh what you're doing down there in Atlantic city next week, but uh, any final thoughts? 
Well, enjoy yourselves. I mean, night owls and, you know, daytime uh, couch uh, sloths like myself, Jeff. We got golf for the next four days. You couldn't ask for better. And the British, I don't know why they took the name away. Way tougher than American golf. They, they play in the rain, Jeff. In America, rain. They, they bring cars out for these guys. You got you to gotta play with a jacket on like <laughs> I do, like you do, Jeff. It's yeah. awesome. It's awesome. Sure. All right, Pez. Been another great show. Thank you very much for your time. And we'll talk to you next week on another Pez's Picks. All right, later.